G'day, fellas. Welcome to a casted game between ACCM playing as the Rus, spawning in the the west of the map. His opponent, Casper, spawning over on the east of the map. Now, for anybody unfamiliar with these two players, these are Age of Empires 2 pros. Both of these guys, my understanding is they're both top 20 players. So an incredibly exciting time to be alive right now because this is a Rus mirror. So as you can see in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you've got both of their flags. So they're both playing the Rus. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm also going to be spectating for the very first time in this game. So we're going to be trying out some new spectator controls. As an example, I've got a hotkey right here on my keyboard, which hopefully, if I've got it correct, should reveal the fog of war. There it goes. And you can see the map that we're on. Now, I'm not actually sure the title of this map. But this is a very curious map, okay? And the reason why, in my opinion, that it's curious is because you've got... A little bit of a pond to the north, which has got deep sea fish. These are very high value resources. Then a pond to the south, which has got no deep sea resources. So very curious. Also in the middle of the map, you've also got uh, plenty of deep sea fish. But keep in mind, you do go for these deep sea fish. You're going to be challenged. That is for sure. Now let's take a look over at ACCM. We'll see what he's up to. Playing as the Rus, so got a lumber camp down, a hunting cabin, and he's got some scouts out already. This is a quick search match or a ranked match, if you will. And so keep in mind that with this game, both of these players elected on this map to play Rus. So whether they think Rus are a little bit stronger at the moment or or what the go is, I'm not too sure. But Casper in the beginning of the game, already moving out to a hunting cabin. The deer carcasses or the deers, they actually do jet, uh, gather faster than their sheep. So as an example, the sheep that are back here, these are going to gather slower than these uh, these uh, deer that are out here. Now, keep in mind that by doing this, there is a fair bit of walking distance that happens out here. For the next villager that comes out, we'll try our new spectator. There you guys go. Look at that. We've got a little follow command right there. Sounds like a wolf is attacking Casper, but that's okay. And then on top of that, we can do this. We can do a little bit of a rotate and zoom at the same time. Look at that. We're getting used to that. those new Age of Empires 4. Uh, those, oh, he was, he was looking at, he was having a look at us. He was saying, hey, what are you talking about? Those new Age of Empires 4 uh, mechanics or spectator uh, aspects. So very, very cool to see. Now, the Rus in the early game, what's what what's the deal? What do you, what do, you do when you play in the Rus? The big thing for the Rus is finding these guys up here, Gaia. It's really, really important that you are out on the map slaying Gaia. We can see that there's double scouts out now. You can see that we've got a, a wolf that's going to be going down. There's also a third scout out now for Casper. When we take a look over at ACCM, we can see that he has got a scout. He's also got two scouts down here to the south. A villager that's moving out and looks to be potentially dropping down a dock. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But one of the things to note that with this civilization, now obviously with every civilization, you can train scouts out of your town center. But if you do that, then you're potentially going to be going idle. So it's something to be very cognizant of throughout the game. If you want to do, if you want to train villagers, well, then you're not going to be able to train scouts. But, but, but. The hunting cabin. The hunting cabin enables you. So this is like the mill uh, for... Jeez, that villager was very happy that she'd constructed that that house. So the mill is uh, replaced for the Rus. So they get the hunting cabin instead. You can see exactly how beautiful it is right there. Got those lovely deer skulls on the end of it. So the hunting cabin has got all of the upgrades that you would expect a mill to have. But it also has the ability to train scouts. And this means that you don't actually have to go idle in the early game. It's a little bit difficult to macro... And I'm working on a build order at the moment for the civilization just to try and nail down the opening as best as possible. But ideally in the early game, you really want to be leveraging the power of the hunting cabin by being able to make as many scouts as possible, using those scouts to generate uh, plenty of gold from Gaia. So as an example, all these sheep right here, these are five gold each. So that's 30 gold right there if they, if they get slayed. And now we've got a little bit of a difficult spot because... We've got Casper, who has moved out in the early game and said, you know what, I am going to, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to expand. And now Casper has dropped down a wooden fortress in the first age. Now, keep in mind, he's potentially going to be losing a villager here. The scouts are doing their best to try and knock it down. And it looks like it's going to go down. But I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't like the positioning of this at all. And I really don't like this opening. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about why that is. So the wooden fortress, it's an outpost, okay? But it's a bit more expensive. We take a look at it here. 175 wood compared to the normal 100 wood that you would be used to. But the difference is that it actually buffs up. So it's got an influence aura. It buffs up town centers and lumber camps within its radius. 
to give an extra 20% wood. Now, one of the things to note is that there is no wood lines at all around here. So it's like, okay, I respect that, yes, you know, you put that down and now this hunt is safe, but there is a consequence to doing this. So I guess my question is, in the early game, is this an advantageous thing to do or a disadvantage, disadvantageous thing to do? I feel like this is not the right decision to do. Compare that to our ACCM, who on the other side has got berries going at the moment. It looks like there's a couple of sheep in here, but hasn't really expanded out to the deers. And the thing is because you can always bring these deers in. And the reason you can do that is because of the hunting cabin. It has great synergy because of professional scouts. So it enables your scouts to actually carry in carcasses. So as an example, if you know your opponent's carcasses are up here, now, keep in mind, they can only carry deer. They can't carry boar, so you can see there's a boar over here. You're not going to be able to carry that guy in. It's too heavy. Even if you've got five scouts, they're not going to be able to lift him. But this one right here, okay, they're going to be able to bring these carcasses in, one by one, across the map, into your base. So you've kind of like... Uh, I don't know what the term is, but essentially, we, by putting this hunting cabin out here, you're just you're wasting a lot of time, a lot of resources, because it's a more expensive mill as well. Keep that in mind. The hunting cabin is 100 uh, wood compared to 50. And so you've really just spent 125 wood extra for what other civilizations would have just had a mill and an outpost out here for. But nonetheless, we've got the Kremlin now going up. Now the Kremlin, once again, curious decision making here from Kasva. So we'll have to see exactly how it goes about it. But lumber camp, so it, it acts as that, um, as that wooden fortress. So he's got two wooden fortresses up here now to the north and uh, i will once again reiterate there are no thick wood lines around here ideally i would have loved to have seen that you know right here up against this wood line and then that way it can guarantee it's got coverage for those lumber camps as it moves into into this wood line so that would have been great to see even potentially right here right in the middle so you can sort of take out two birds with one stone and now we've got a little bit of a fight happening down the bottom of the map scouts on scout action accm Looking pretty strong at the moment. We can see that he is up on score about 100 points, about 75 points. Has got that double dock down in the middle of the map. And a couple of Lodya fishing boats. Look how big these boys are. So for anybody unfamiliar with the Lodya, the way the Lodya works is it can be transformed into another vessel of sorts. Now, I don't actually know how it works, so we're going to be working that out ourselves for the first time. So if you hover over this, it actually tells you. So you can convert it. It switches roles. So... They start off as fishing boats, but then you can be like, oh, I don't want fishing boats anymore. I'm just going to get a whole bunch of attack ships. And then they just convert into attack ships, I guess. That's pretty cool. I've uh, I've, I've not seen or, or heard much about these. Uh, now, one of the things to note is that uh, ACCM is going off what appears to be. I'm going to assume that this is uh, shorefish. One of the things to remember, you want to be out on those deep sea fish. These bad boys out here, they do generate or gather food much faster than the shorefish. So something to, to note. Let's take a look over at ACCM. He's also gone up with the Kremlin. So the Kremlin is one of your options in the, in the second age. Uh, once again, this acts as a tower. So we can see that it is buffing up this, uh, this lumber camp as well as this town center for its wood gathering. So we can see that it's got 20% higher uh, wood return rate. So you can see that there's a plus 12. So typically you'd be dropping off plus 10s if we go take a look over at Casper. And watch right here. This is most likely going to be plus 10s because I don't think he's got wheelbarrow researched. He does actually have it. It's going to be plus 15s then. Uh, but that 20% would be a plus 18 instead. So something to definitely take note of. Now, we've got a little bit of an opening here. Double stable coming out for Casper in the early game. A lot of villagers on gold here. Now, keep in mind, one of the things that the Rus have got access to in the early game is the early Lancer, or early Knight, rather. So the early Knight... It's available to the Rus, it's available to the French, and I think it might be available to the Mongols. I'm not too sure, uh, but one of the things to note, it is not as strong as your Fortress Age Lancer unit. Okay, it is going to need to be upgraded to get up there. You can see upgrades early nights to nights. So there is a... It's, it's almost a double-edged sword. You've got access to it in the second age, but you're going to have to upgrade it when you get to the third age. But I tell you what, it's a double-edged sword, but I definitely take that sword any day of the week because that's a pretty darn good unit to have. So these guys are a lot stronger than their horsemen counterparts in the second age. Significantly higher attack, significantly higher uh, resistances, but the consequence is they are quite expensive as well. So the early knight has got 240 cost compared to the horseman, which has only got 120 cost. So very, very important to consider the relative costs of these units when you're looking at how they match up in battle. But keep in mind, the early knight typically is almost always going to be coming out on top 
in those early fights. We'll take a look over at ACCM and we'll see exactly what he's up to. It's got plenty of housing population. Now, one of the things that we haven't actually touched on yet is the bounty system. So here we've got uh, we've got ACCM bringing in these deers. Now, we spoke about this earlier, how as a civilization you can bring in those deers. A little bit of a raid now happening up towards the east of the map. But these deers are getting brought in uh, because he's unlocked this or he's researched this technology that's right here. Professional scouts. I don't think uh, I don't think Casper's got it. Yeah, or so, rather, I take that back. Casper does indeed have it. And so what you can do is you can you can slaughter your deer in the early game, grab your bounty for them, and then you can bring them back to your base once you've reached the second age. And you might be saying, well, Jongo, bounty? What the heck are you talking about? A bounty? All right. That's a great question, my friend. So the Rus have got a bounty system. It's a unique system. Let me talk a little bit about it while we watch these two, these two sets of cavalry just womple each other. So, the bounty system down here, bottom left-hand corner. So, as you hunt Gaia around the map... Let's let's follow these units while we do it. As you hunt Gaia around the map, you're going to be receiving gold. So, each unit has got a different uh, value. So, you can see down at the very bottom of this tooltip, it says a sheep is 5, a deer 10, a wolf is 25, and a boar is 75. So, you're going to be primarily looking for those sheep, deer, and wolves in the early game. You're going to be looking to kill them. Once you accumulate, so it, it tallies this up for you. So throughout the game, the more you kill, the, the higher it's going to get, your bounty. We'll take a look down at the south and see exactly what's happening here. We actually have a little bit of scout on scout action as the, the scouts are attempting to get back to the base because they're running back now with uh, with the deers that, uh, that were a little bit out a little bit further. And it's a correct decision to go for the, the further out deer. Now we've got more cavalry fights happening in the early game. And there's just so much... Lancer on Lancer action or night on night action here. So definitely the right thing, but he's got to be careful. I would not be engaging with those scouts. I, you can use them to, to uh, soak damage. But um, talking more about the bounty system though. So as the tally builds up throughout the game, you're going to get extra bonuses from it. The first thing that you're going to get villager harvest rate. So that's for food. 5%, then you can see at tier 2 it gets to 10% and then 15%. But also your hunting cabins. So these little bad boys right here, they act as mills, but they also have this weird thing where depending on how many trees they've got in their radius, they will also generate gold. And that's 22 gold a minute, okay? But it, it changes. My understanding is that it gets lower and lower and lower depending on your bounty accumulated. So you can see that hunting cabins generate gold every 27 seconds, then 24, then 18 seconds. Now, I don't know exactly how that works. I don't know whether that's 22 per minute until you reach that bounty threshold, then it becomes... Uh, then it becomes 22 a minute, or uh, 22 every 27 seconds. I'm not too sure exactly uh, how effective it is. Uh, but one of the things to note is that when you place down a, uh, a hunting cabin like this one right here, that it is at 11 a minute because there's just no trees around you. So you really want to get them in nice and close. Like this one here is going to be nice, 29 a minute. If you got one in somewhere around here or, or in here, if you can get between two wood lines, you're going to be really, you're going to be feeling very good. Now, you guys will notice that the screen somewhat flickers. Uh, that's when I'm switching players. So you can see that. I'm not sure if that uh, is, is coming through on the replay or on, on the OBS, but it, there's a little bit of a flicker when I swap players. So I think I'm probably going to just avoid swapping players. But one of the things to note is that when you do swap players, you don't actually hear the sounds of the other player. So you can just hear it's very quiet. It's very, it's very scary. But then we swap to Casper. And now you're going to have a lot more noises over here. But anyway, we'll, we'll continue watching. We'll continue waiting to see exactly what happens. Because now we've got some pikes or spears rather that have come out. Spears going to begin chasing down the knights. Engaging with them quite well. They're in significantly higher numbers as well. So going to be able to clean this up very easily. The, the consequence of these spears is that now his docks are going to be threatened. And if you lose these docks, you lose basically your entire livelihood. But ACCM, he's got a big brain and he knows that he can just dock up the other side. And that's exactly what he does. So he's safely docked these middle ponds. He's looking really healthy. If we do a stock take on village account, we've got 51 for Casper. We'll take a look over at ACCM. He's sitting on 67. So he's up about 16 villages right now. You can see that that's reflected in the score as well. ACCM's up about 400 score at the moment. And so the question is... What can Casper really do to come back into this game? There's a couple of, of different options he's got, but I would I would start by dropping down a second town center. So you can see that he's got the first town center that's sitting down here. I don't think we've got a second town center out just yet from him. It doesn't look like it. So I, I would definitely go down that route because 
typically I, I would say that the water falls off but in truth when there's this many deep sea fish uh, the water doesn't fall off this is like this is ACCM right now is basically sitting on five town centers it's uh, it gets pretty ludicrous beginning to move in now Casper is plenty of pikes chasing across the map all of these cavalry units and forcing them back but now full, pulling them back himself realizing that there are villages and where there are villages very shortly there could be towers so it's important but at the same time we've now got age three being reached by ACCM we'll take a look and see if we can spot his wonder I can't actually or his landmark rather uh, there it is it's the high trade house and I'm I'm very glad that he chose this landmark because this landmark is an incredible landmark let's talk a little bit about what this landmark does so the high trade house absolutely beautiful building you can see it's wooden construction there in theme with the Rus. so it generates gold like a hunting cabin we talked about that earlier so you want it next to trees but it does it with 200 percent increased value in addition to that it spawns a deer every 60 seconds so a deer has got 350 food on it let's see if we can spot any more carcasses there you go 350 so essentially you can just have five or six villages for the rest of the game always on this food income it's always going to be there always going to be safe always going to be very high uh gather rate as well so really really a a wonderful wonder of, or landmark rather sorry apologies i am from age of empires 3 where we call these wonders uh these are not landmarks in age of empires 3 so it's going to take me some time to get used to it but uh now we can see across the map the lancers or knights beginning to push out a little bit of a cheeky wall coming down right now Fortif fortified palisade wall castle reaching the third age behind this trying to get that wall up but the the knights just marching through the gates looking with their large uh, what are those things lancers i guess you'd say they're, no they're jousting what, what, what do you have when you joust let's have a look and see if it says it, do, it doesn't tell us but uh they're fighting against uh, against spears and this is not the fight that you would want to take even though you could win this fight it's just not going to be an efficient trade now it looks like some archers going to be moving in on the back line as well more action coming in at the north it's just a scout on a villager don't be too worried but accm is looking to finish off the game right here pushing in for a bit of a death push and now we see his opponent casper has gone up to the third agent has gone up with a little bit of a different landmark that landmark is the abbey of the trinity this is a religious centered landmark and you can just see how beautiful it is really the artwork in this game is 100 percent on point it is so impressive i really really love the look of this so this landmark enables you to train amongst other things the all-important warrior monk so it's a little bit more i'd say it's a little bit more expensive but in reality it's actually uh, cheaper than a, a standard monk uh you, you, or monk i'm not sure i know there's somebody going to be saying that's not how you pronounce it drongo uh monk monk I'm not sure exactly the correct way, but I, I digress. These guys are insane. So they're fast, they're pretty, they can't possibly be beaten. And there's also unique technologies in here as well. We've also got the unique horse archer. And now coming out for ACCM, going to be looking to set up a bit of a raid. These guys are different to the Mangadai. The Mangadai can move and shoot. The horse archer cannot. Uh, I, I hope it's the Mangadai. I'm, I'm just trying to think right now. Uh, yes, it is. It's uh, from the Mongols. Uh, so these guys cannot move and shoot. They have to shoot and then they have to scoot. Whereas the Mangadite can quite literally run away and fire away. You can take a look at the stats. They're quite high attack, uh, but they don't actually have a bonus against anything, which makes them very effective at just killing everything. So incredibly uh, effective unit, but at the end of the day, they are quite expensive as well. We'll take a look at the Archery Ranger just so you can see how much they are. They're 80 food, 40 wood. Available in the Third Age as well. So Mangadai's the unique unit uh, for the... Um, for the Mongols, for the Rus, it's the Horse Archer. So now beginning to siege down this Abbey of the Trinity. We'll take a look at some of the technologies that you can get access to. Inc includes Improved Blessing. Improves the damage granted by the Saint's Blessing. Saint's Reach increases the range of Saint's Blessing by three tiles. And increases the duration of Blessing by plus 10 seconds. It is the Blessing Duration. So it's one of those mechanics that uh, you will undoubtedly get to see more and more of as you watch more Rus gameplay. But this landmark does look like it's going to go down. Kasper is very aware of the, the threat that exists right now and has dropped down that big castle that we can see behind. Now, in Age of Empires 4, these are called keeps. They are not called castles. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why they decided uh, to go down that route, but nonetheless, I'm going to still call castles as we see more spears now coming in. These are hardened spears or upgraded spears, veteran spears. You can tell by the little pointy or the pointy uh, edge of their, their lance that they've got, their spear that they've got as they chase away right now the archers. They've got quite high base damage as well. You want to avoid getting into melee combat with them. 
And now we've got to, we're going to watch that keep just begin to disintegrate all of those cavalry units. You see here just how quickly it drops them down, firing out so many arrows. Additional arrows do get fired if there's more units that are uh, garrisoned inside. A little bit of a trade happening as well right now. We've got a trade post here for Casper and a market. But one of the things to note when it comes to how the trading post works, you can see that these guys have only got six gold on them. All right. The further away your market is from the trading post, the more gold you're going to be generating significantly. So as your market moves away by a tile, your uh, your gold gathered will be significantly higher. So ideally for Casper, if he could place a market up here in this corner right here, he would be looking real good or even right here would be perfect for him. And then that way he could get much bigger trades because technically, yes, you're going to have more gold coming in quickly here. You're going to have a lot more gold coming in here a lot less slow or a lot more slowly if that makes sense so the trips are going to be longer but the gold is going to be significantly greater so really important to consider when you are dropping down those markets horse archers now beginning to chase back those early knights you can just see how much difficulty they're having but the horse archers are looking very very strong here i'm loving what i'm seeing from the rus so far and Casper having a difficult time dealing with accm accm beginning to pull ahead quite significantly on score We'll take a look exactly how he's doing. And you can just see there are so many resources right here in the in the water that he's yet to even get, you know, tap right here. There, there's just so many. He's got a lot of fishing boats. Looks like he doesn't actually have the second fishing upgrade just yet. Uh, there are two once you get to the uh, the castle age. So let's talk a little bit about this and, and why exactly it's so strong. Deep water fish regenerate. Yes. They regenerate. So this this deep water fish over here was probably exhausted by ACCM quite early in the game, but it's since come back up to 2,000 of 2,000. It takes time for it to do that, but the fishing populations will over time regenerate back up. Now that is only for deep sea fish. For shore fish, it is not the case. Once you it, once you've eaten up a shore fish, it's gone for good. But the deep sea fish, even though even though they're only like you know slightly off the coast. It's still deep water, apparently, so they are going to be regenerating nonetheless. We'll take a look now at a military and economic stock take 90 and 48 versus 75 and 26. So we do see that Casper is, is quite far behind at the moment. We've got ACCM who's beginning to build that all-important Imperial Age wonder now, and it is, of course, the Spaskaya Tower. And have a look at those absolutely awesome arrows. It's a defensive landmark. He's placed it down, acts as a keep with all weapon emplacements already in place and with increased health. So 8,000 HP on this keep. Compare that over to the keep of his opponent, which only sits on 5,000. And you can see that these are those weapon emplacements that we're talking about. With the exception of boiling oil not researched, you can see that there are, is a springled as well as cannons that are already on this keep. A siege workshop now going to be going down for ACCM as well. Walls down to the south. Going to help out Casper for any potential raids that are out here. But the main front that the fight begins now is up on this north front. And can I just say for a moment how absolutely beautiful these houses look. Now, for anybody wondering, okay, I th there is a 4K texture pack for Age of Empires 4. Now, I've only got a 3070 on this computer. And I find that when I've got the 4K texture pack enabled, it actually lags the game quite significantly. So you, you guys would have very bad FPS lag right now if I had that enabled. Um, so I don't have that enabled. Game still looks very, very nice, though. Uh, I I'm curious to know in the comments, if anyone has tried the 4K texture pack, it obviously looks amazing, but can you get it to stay above 60 FPS? Because I've been having difficulty with it, so let me know. But I, s I still think the game looks absolutely amazing, even without the 4K texture pack. I think it's it works out to be like an extra 28 gigabytes or something like that. It gets pretty crazy. But now the forces are beginning to mass up to the north for ACCM. We'll do a little bit more of a, a look at his base and take a look what we've got. We've got a monastery which sit, sits uh, down here to the south. It's got one relic in it at the moment. And uh, quite a beautiful base, really. I love the, the aesthetics of the Russians. or the, Sorry, not the Russians, the Rus. Uh, and we've got more, uh, more Rus sheep right here. Now, in interesting to note that ACCM hasn't gone on to tier 2 yet for the Rus bounties. And this is something to note for, for Rus mirrors, because you are going to be fighting your opponent for those all-important bounties. We take a look over at Casper. Casper is in the third age, but still has a trebuchet. Yes, you see that correct. In the castle age, you can still access the trebuchet. You do not have to get to the imperial age for the trebuchet. Uh, keep in mind that if you want to get access to the bombard, though, you're going to be having to 
do your best to get up to the Imperial Age so that you can get that. Now, we take a look at, at Kasva. He has actually accumulated enough bounty to get to the second tier. So he's got a 10% villager harvest rate. But at the end of the day, an extra 5% on your villager food uh, harvest rate is not going to matter when your enemy has got... How many, how many fishing boats have we got out here right now? 23, I can see here on my screen right now. I, I think it's 23 fishing boats. Which, you know, they're the fastest gatherers of food in the game on deep sea fish. As long as it's relatively close to the, uh, to the dock. So, it, that's pretty incredible to say right there. ACCM now going to begin finally taking out this uh, this keep. It has gone down. And going to be able to push in. We do actually see it looks like a Bombard is now coming out. Bombard is going to be very effective against absolutely everything. Keep in mind, it doesn't have AoE, so really good for high priority targets. Let's say your opponent's got some Knights out. 170 damage. This is 230 right here. So, something to consider does extra damage against buildings though uh, not as much range as the trebuchet and but significantly more damage and a much higher uh, attack rate uh, so you can see there 450 damage for the counterweight trebuchet versus 170 plus 340 so it works out to be about what is that i'm just going to do some quick math here but it looks like 510 i think that might be right but now the horse elite horse archers are coming out. It looks like there's quite a mass of them built up as well. Trebuchet is moving into a difficult spot. Got to be careful with these bombards. They will go down quite quickly. There are many knights out here, as well as many spearmen. Going to be able to deal with this effectively. But the difficult spot is that these spearmen are going to get absolutely cleaned up. We see villagers now looking to sort of get inside. They actually do get inside onto this castle, or onto, onto this landmark. And I don't even know if if Casper realizes that this is a castle or a keep itself. He, he may not actually realize until he gets run, run ring around the rosies right here. It looks like ACCM is going to be able to clean this up very effectively. I really don't think Casper realized exactly what this is. Though I do say that and I realize he is actually focusing it down with the counterweight trebuchet. So maybe he does realize and just didn't think that there would be so much of an effective force there coming out from ACCM. It's going to continue pushing down now. It's going to be putting him in a bit of a difficult spot as we finish up this Rust Mirror. I can only suspect that ACCM comes out victorious. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. GG getting called. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the Rus in a competitive environment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.